This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Brooklyn, New York, welcome everyone who has taken the time to join us in our virtual worship experience this morning. We encourage you to participate in the reading of the scriptures, singing the songs, and praying along with us. For in so doing, we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together, even as we are apart physically. We as believers are living into God's vision for us, a faith-based community who not only confess that scripture is primary, but know through the lived experience that it's a lamp onto our feet and a light along this earthly pathway that leads to eternal life with God our Heavenly Father. We trust that this time together will inspire you to go out and make disciples for Jesus Christ even as you continue to live Christ-like lives for all to see. Welcome, saints, to this special Sunday on the liturgical calendar. Today we celebrate Pentecost. Let us begin our worship with our opening hymn. Let us join together wherever you are with our opening prayer. Holy God, Thank you for sending your spirit, the spirit of the risen Christ from heaven. Help us to be like the early disciples, praying patiently as we wait for your guidance and power. Fill our hearts and minds with your gifts of faith, hope, and love. May our conversations with people of every language and culture around us witness to your grace and your mercy. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore, amen. And now saints, we'll ask that you join with us as we sing our vision statement together.
And I'm hopefully as you've been standing at this point, that you will continue to stand as we praise and worship, spend a little time praising and worship God together. Hallelujah. God, we want you to breathe on us this morning. We want you to consume us, God. Hallelujah. God, we give ourselves away. God, we crucify our flesh. We cancel our egos. We cancel any selfish desires that we have. And we decide that we want more of you. Anybody out there want more of him this morning? Come on, lift your hands. Anybody out there want more of him this morning? God, we can't do nothing without you. And so, God, we want more of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this song simply says, I give myself away. Hallelujah. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, 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 oh. I give.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give myself away. I give myself away. So many of you can you yes. Hallelujah. We give ourselves to you, God. And we worship you in spirit and in truth. We lift your name high. Hallelujah. Of God, amen. Hallelujah. All the glory and all the praise for He deserves it all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Light of the world, you came down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me
our saints, let us turn our attention to the reading of the scriptures. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 21. We'll be led by our sister Janice Innes Cox. Good morning, church. The lesson today is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation on the heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from J Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own towns. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. As we continue our worship, let us sing together our hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour, United Methodist Hymn number 397. Most gracious 
now, saints, we turn our attention to the reading of a scripture. Again, it comes from Psalm 104, verses 24 through 34, our Psalter reading and our response. Praise the Lord, the Almighty, who rules all creation. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures, your creatures. Excuse me. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things immeasurable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Lathiathan, whom you form to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountain and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have being. May my meditations be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, who rules all creation. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn, There's Within My Heart a Melody, United Methodist Hymn Number 380. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low
on me Far beyond the starry sky I shall win my fight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name Now, saints, we're at the point of our service that is the second most exciting part of worship. We have an opportunity to give a little bit back on to God who has so richly blessed us. Let us recite together our foundational scripture for giving. It comes from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and the seventh verse. Let us recite it together. Each person should give what they have decided in their hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for, love, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Father, we thank you, God, for these gifts of tithes and offerings. We thank you, God, that you are the provider, God, of it all. We thank you, God, for hearts and minds, God, that are willing to give to you, God, and to give for the building of your kingdom. Use these gifts of tithes and offerings to bless your church. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and in the name of the precious Holy Spirit, the three who never disagree. Amen. And now, saints, let us hear the epistle lesson this day. It comes from... 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses, one, verses 3 through 13. It'll be read by our brother Albert Newville. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us hear the words written by Paul in 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. 
back. Verses 3 through 13. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinction between spirits, to another speaking different kinds of tongues, and into still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one, just as he determines the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, saints, we're at the point of our service where we're preparing our hearts for the word of God. Our hymn of preparation is, I'm going to live so that God can use me. Let us pray, eternal and most gracious God, we thank you for yet another opportunity to share your word with your people. We trust and believe, O oh God, that you would glorify yourself through the preaching of your word. Work through me, your servant, God. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my rock, you are my redeemer, my savior and my friend. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you. Amen. Saints, we're going to at this time take a few moments to look at the scripture that was read from the book of Acts in the second chapter and explore this notion of community spread. As we take a few moments to look at once again at the transforming effects of what occurs in the lives of both disciples of Jesus Christ and those who happen to be hanging around us during those, spe those specific occasions when the transcendent, transcendent glory of the Lord is revealed. One thing we know happens is that lives are changed for the better. The Bible says that Pentecost was one such moment. The spirit of the Lord moved in an unusual and unfamiliar way for the disciples on the first day of Pentecost. And the text informs us that it was what they said as a result of the unfamiliar movement of the spirit that changed hearts and minds resulting in the spread of the gospel. People from every part of the region was there, thus the, wonderful, uh, thus the wonderful works of Jesus Christ was able to be broadcast throughout various communities. The Holy Spirit was revealed and for the first time, folks started communicating with each other in ways that they had never done before. The disciples are those who had experienced the wonderful works of Jesus Christ speaking and those who needed to learn of the wonderful works of Jesus Christ were able to listen and understand because they were hearing it being taught to them in their own language. This verifiable historical event, which took place over 2,000 years ago, affirms the fact that when the Holy Spirit is manifested, everything begins changing, not as a result of anything that we do physically, but Change begins happening when we start speaking of what we know about the wonderful works of Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit's power is manifested in us, uh, that which is expected to happen is replaced by the unexpected because there will be those who are still doing things uh, that they are accustomed to doing as a result of the, of the words uh, that are being spoken into their lives. For the power of life and death, it's not in what we do to or for each other, but the power of life and death is in what we say to each other. Now, there must be an, an invasion of the Holy Spirit of our heart, for out of the heart, the Bible says the mouth speaks. So what took place at Pentecost was at the very root of God's love in action, which means that one of the Holy Spirit's jobs is to regulate our hearts so that that which we speak is always declaring the wonderful works of God that is manifested in our lives. We are to speak in ways that display that what we are saying comes from an, un an unshakable knowledge of the power of God and, and that knowledge feeds our faith and encourages others to enter into a faith that we have in this wonderful works of Jesus Christ. When we say that which we know to be true regarding what we believe and why we believe what we believe, uh, the lives of those who hear us will be transformed to the glory of God. For we know that Luke the physician, the, the one who was known to be meticulously detailed in his writings regarding the works of, of God through Jesus Christ, write, writes that when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. In other words, God decided to reveal his transcendent glory, not in some secret or isolated place, but God's glory is revealed in plain view so that all can hear and witness to the fact that the power of God's glory changes everything. This Pentecostal experience was was a moment in time when the transcendent glory of God came and caused people to hear that which in ordinary times would have caused panic. The Bible says that suddenly, without warning and without any uh, uh, understanding of what was about to happen, but it was suddenly when a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole earth 
uh, the whole house where they were sitting. And, and when God's glory is on display, and when God's glory is on the way, the, the sound of his, his appearance is, is not meant to scare the living daylights out of us, but it's intended to get our attention. Not only did they get to hear the coming of the transcendent glory of the Lord, but they were also privileged to see and experience fire in ways that they or we, for that matter, could not have imagined in a million years. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came and rested on each of them. There, this was no burning bush experience. God did not speak to them like he did with Moses on Mount Sinai. This experience with that which seemed to be tongues of fire didn't do any speaking at all. But instead, it caused them whom it rested upon to do all of the talking. And that's when God's transcendent glory changed everything because the selective few upon whom it rested on became filled with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit enabled them to speak in languages that was not their own. Now these men, these men were not members of the intellectual leaders class of their day. No, they, they were a ragtag group of tradesmen for the most part, which serves as proof that when the transcendent glory of the Lord appears, none of us has to worry about what to say how to say what God wants us to say, nor do we have to worry about who we need to witness to because the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, when believers are gathered together in one place and the Holy Spirit goes to work in and through the people of God, folk from every nation under heaven will hear it and be drawn to what they hear and, and wonder what in the world is going on. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, you will know it because he gives you power to speak. Speak not about foolish and insignificant things, but, but, but of the wonders of the Lord in and over your life that has served to inform your faith. For it is in the claiming of your, your narrative of God's transforming presence that helps others to become informed about the faith that we possess. When these men began speaking through the inspiration of the transcendent glory of God in the person of the Holy Spirit. They spoke of what they knew of the person and finished work of Jesus Christ. Because it's all about power to speak words that will help others to make it from day to day. I tell you that there will be some folk who will be amazed when they hear and see the manner in which you have been changed as a result of having experiencing the transcendent glory of the Lord in and over your life. Folk will be amazed because just like in the text on the first day of Pentecost, there will be some who know who you used to be. They know where you came from and they know how you used to act and, and what you used to do. And, and before you experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in a way that left you changed for the glory of God. Pentecost, this day in the life of a particular group of men who had gathered together in a house some 2,000 years ago has become, for those of us who are post-resurrected disciples of Jesus Christ, any moment in time when two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ because, because the same transcendent glory of God can manifest itself right in the here and now. And just as it was in the case with that first Pentecostal experience, when folk witnessed the transcendent glory of the Lord descend upon God's people, there will be those among us who will wonder, what does this mean? And others will be dismayed outright or, or dismiss it outright as a bunch of drunkards carrying on. But since we serve a God of order, Whenever his glory is manifested, God will provide answers to the questions and a rebuke to the naysayers. That when the church of this dispensation experiences the manifest 
manifestation of the transcendent glory of the Lord as they gather together in his name. We will talk in ways that we've never spoken before. And everyone will be amazed and perplexed. When we start experiencing this manifestation of the transcendent glory of the Lord in the church, within the context of what we call worship, that's when Joel's prophecy will become our reality. For God said that in the last days, when my transcendent glory is revealed and everything is changed, for, for uh, the first notable change will be that my spirit will be poured out on all flesh. I don't know about you, but that sounds like community spread to me. No longer will only the select few be able to stay claim to the possessing uh, the power and the presence in their lives. That sounds like more community spread to me. But, uh, but your sons and your daughters will prophesy. In other words, babies will begin instructing grown folk concerning God's plan for his life. That sounds like community spread for me. The, the, the descendant glory of the Lord changes everything for uh, even young men and old men's roles will change because it's normally the role of those who live the longest to be better positioned to cast a vision for others to follow. It, it, it's normally the young who are always dreaming about what the future holds but when the transcendent glory of the Lord is present the young are the ones who see visions, while the old folk are the ones who are dreaming dreams. That's community spread from the bottom up. It sounds like God wants to expand his, his, his kingdom here on earth. And the Bible says that when the transcendent glory of the Lord fills the place on that appointed day and time, God's spirit will expand its manifestation from just young folk being given the gift to prophesy, but all of God's servants, both men and women, will be able to tell of the future movement of the Lord. This awe-inspiring manifestation of the glory of the Lord will not only affect and change us, but God will show wonders in heaven and signs on earth. When the transcendent glory of God imposes himself on the church. Everything and everyone will be changed because all of us will need to get ourselves ready for the coming of that great and glorious day of the Lord. But when God's transcendent glory is manifested in the, in the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, a willpower to speak of the wonders of God in ways that will impact the lives of those in our community. And for most of us, our neighbors, the communities in which we live are made up of folk from all over the world. Pentecost was a part of God's divinely designed plan to spread his glory from person to person, from house to house, from community to community, and ultimately from nation to nation. And everyone, according to the Bible, who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, which is, my brothers and sisters, community spread resulting in heaven being realized right here on earth. We have to Pray for the spirit to move in our tongues because that's the way we spread the gospel. And that's the way community spread takes place as we tell of the wonderful works of Jesus Christ. Pentecost was all about spreading the good news of Christ. And God used people and their tongues to do it. May this be our testimony. May God see us as a people who are not afraid to tell of his wonders. For in doing so, we are participating 
and the spreading of the gospel throughout the community in which we live. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the precious Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this wonderful reminder that on the day of Pentecost, there was a reason for you giving them the ability to speak in different languages. That God, it wasn't just for them to communicate with you, but it was for them to be able to communicate to the nation, to the world. So Father, we pray, oh God, that you would loose our lips and help us, God, to be Pentecostal in telling of the wonderful works of Jesus Christ. For in doing so, we are bringing the day of Pentecost into our everyday lives in doing our part in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. May this be our witness and our testimony from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you. Amen. We want to we wanna also take this opportunity to give someone an opportunity to wherever you are to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life. Because before you can experience Pentecost, you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You simply have to confess that you are a sinner. Repent of your sin. Ask God to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior in the person of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says you will be saved. It's as simple and profound as that. Salvation is available at any moment, at any day, and at any time, and at anywhere. So wherever you are, you can be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, saints, as we look to our closing hymn, our closing hymn is Hold to God's Unchanging Hand.
And now unto you, O God, who's able to keep us standing faultless before the throne. The only true and wise God we know. God, dismiss us now with your blessing. Give us, God, uh, the courage to speak of the wonderful works of Christ. For in doing that, we are spreading the gospel to the communities in which we live. For this is Pentecost, God's love in action through us. Amen.